हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू माय चैनल कंटेनिंग फार्माकोगनोसिस सब्जेक्ट वीडियो सो इन दिस चैनल वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद द प्रैक्टिकल्स ऑफ फार्माकोगनोसी टू सब्जेक्ट इन व्हिच वी हैव सीन रिगार्डिंग द फेनल फ्रूट एज वेल एज द कोरिएंडर फ्रूट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल स्टार्ट विद द सिन्नामोन सो बिफोर स्टार्ट विद दिस सिन्नामोन बार प्लीज लाइक एंड शेयर दिस वीडियो Also subscribe my channel if you are new to my channel and also don't forget to add a comment. So in this video we are going to study regarding the synonym biological source macroscopy microscopy chemical constituent as well as the uses of cinnamon bark. So as per our tradition we are using many spices. So one of the important spice is nothing but the cinnamon which contains the volatile oil and that is responsible for the specific aroma so cinnamon bark and its powder it is used in the spices and in marathi it is known as the dalchini while in hindi it is known as the kalmi dalchini so we are all are very familiar uh, to this cinnamon bark so let us start uh, with this cinnamon bark the synonyms of the cinnamon bark are as follows that is uh, in marathi it is known as dalchini in hindi it is known as kalmi dalchini while it is also synonym as cinnamon bark or ceylon cinnamon so this is regarding the different cinnamons of the cinnamon bark now regarding the biological source so we know that the dried bark part of the cinnamon is commonly used or sometimes the powder of cinnamon is also used so while obtaining this particular part here the biological source it includes dried inner bark of shoots of trees of cinnamomum xylenicum needs where this is obtained as an inner bark of the shoots of the trees and it is generally obtained from the genus cinnamomum while the species is xylenicum and that belongs to the family that is lauraceae family so it is obtained in the form of inner bark of shoots of trees of cinnamomum xylenica that belongs to the family lauraceae where whatever the cinnamon it is used that should contain not less than 1% volume by weight of volatile oil so we know that cinnamon is commonly known for its volatile oil content so whatever the official variety of a cinnamon is available that should contain not less than 1% volume by weight of the volatile oil so now regarding the macroscopy of this cinnamon bark so regarding the color so the external surface and the internal surface both are having the different color and also having some kind of a differences so for external surface it is having the yellowish brown color and it is showing some shiny lines and it shows the presence of occasional scars as well as the holes so scars are nothing but this black color spots which are occurring on this surface so this is uh, generally because of the branching where the branch will left this particular holes and the scars on this external surfaces where on the inner surface this inner surface is a striated with longitudinal elongated reticulation so here we can observe the longitudinal elongations or the longitudinal striations on these surfaces where this internal surface it is generally dark in color while the external surfaces these are having the dull yellowish brown color so this is regarding the color now regarding the shape so these bars these are consisting of a single or a double or that may be either compound quill so uh, this bark whenever these are in a rounded shape so that is known as a quill and if it is having a single uh, round then it is known as the single quill if it is having both the ends which are rounded then it is known as the double quill 
and if it is having the number rounded bars inside one another then it is known as the compound quill where it is having a diameter of about 6 to 10 mm and it is having the length which is of a varying sizes that is it is having uh, about 1 meter or more than that length okay so this is regarding the shape and then the odor so as it is going to contain the volatile oil so it is having that fragrant odor and the taste so we know that this is having uh, some warm feeling uh, when we are going to eat this uh, cinnamon bar so because of its spicy nature it is going to produce the warm feeling then afterwards this taste is going to become a sweetish so as it contains some sweet substances so it is producing that sweet taste that can be identified later and obviously it contains the volatile oil therefore it is again going to show the aromatic taste so the particular taste is warm then sweetish and then it shows the aromatic taste so this is regarding the macroscopic characteristics of this cinnamon bark now we will start with the microscopy of the cinnamon bark so after taking the transverse section of the cinnamon bark and staining it with fluoroglucinol and scl we will get the transverse section like this okay now we will see the detail parts of this microscopy so in the microscopy of this cinnamon bark the layers like periderm which contain cork and cortex then the stone cell layer which contains this pericyclic fibers as well as the sclerite and the secondary phloem region that contains the phloem fibers so these three parts found in this microscopy but in some cases this periderm region that containing cork and cortex is absent but here in the microscopy it is showing this particular part so now we will see the detail explanation of each of these part so in periderm it contains cork and cortex layer where the cork layer it contains few layers of polygonal tubular cells so these are the few layers of the polygonal tubular cells which are alternatively thick and thin walled which are alternatively thick and thin walled cells where the inner cells are thick walled and that are lignified so inner cells of this cork cells these are lignified while in case of cortex so the cortex consisting of about 10 to 15 layers of a parenchyma and it contains the starch grain as well as the raphides in its cells so these starch grains and raphides these are distributed throughout this cortex layer okay so it contains about 10 to 15 layers of the parenchymatous cells so this is regarding the periderm now we will start with the another layer that is nothing but the stone cell layer so here you can see or you can observe the dark portion it is nothing but the stone cell layer so it is also known as the pericyclic layer so this layer it consisting of a pericyclic fiber and the sclerites so these pericyclic fibers these are lignified in nature where these are having about 30 to 40 micron meter diameter these pericyclic fibers are present in the form of a small groups these are present in the form of a small groups where each group contain about 6 to 15 pericyclic fibers and that are present at a specific interval so here you can see this is the group of the pericyclic fiber so it is present at an aspheric specific interval and that contains about 6 to 15 pericyclic fibers which are lignified in nature why the regarding the sclerites so it contains about 3 to 4 layers of a pitted sclerite so it is having the pitted like structures which are thick lignified structures so the walls of this sclerites these are thick walled 
and these are lignified in nature where these sclerites these are somewhat tangentially elongated these are somewhat tangentially elongated so they are showing the u shaped thickening so if you are going to observe it so these are having the u shape thickening okay so this is regarding the pericyclic or stone cell layer now the next layer it is nothing but the secondary phloem so this secondary phloem it consisting of phloem fibers medullary rays oil cells or sometimes it also contains the mucilaginous cells so uh, this secondary phloem this is nothing but it contains the parenchymatous cells where this few cells they contains acicular raphides that is nothing but the acicular type of a calcium oxalate crystals as well as they contains the starch grains okay so this is regarding the uh, general structure which is present in the secondary phloem now the particular structures that is the phloem fibers so these phloem fibers these are single isolated circular so how we can observe this phloem fibers these are single and it is isolated and circular and these are generally signified with stratification okay signified with the stratification so this is nothing but the phloem fiber and these are distributed in this particular secondary phloem region while the oil cells so here we can observe the oil cells which are isolated and big ellipsoidal structures that contains the volatile oil okay so these are again distributed throughout this layer which are isolated big structures that contains the volatile oil now regarding the medullary ray so here you can see the particular arrangement of this medullary ray which are occur in the form of a rows okay in the form of a rows so these medullary rays these are biserrated so here we can observe the two lines of these medullary rays so therefore or we can say the serial arrangement of this particular cells so these are nothing but showing known as the biserrated arrangement this is known as the biserrated arrangement where these are narrow at inner side while they becomes broader as they run towards the scleroid side okay they becomes broader as they run towards this scleroid or this stone cell layer where this medullary rays they contains uh, starch grain as well as the acicular raphide so this is regarding the medullary rays and in some times this also contains the mucilaginous cells but that can be observed only after staining with the ruthenium rays so this is regarding the different parts that can be observed in the microscopy of this cinnamon bark so while observing the transverse section of this cinnamon bark under the microscope the staining reagents like fluoroglycinol and concentrated hcl which gives pink color to the lignified cells where the lignified cells such as pericyclic fiber stone cell cork cells they get stained while the second staining reagent that is the iodine which gives blue color to the starch third staining reagent that is ruthenium red which gives pink color to the mucilaginous cells then the fourth reagent that is the acetic acid which produces insoluble calcium oxalate crystals and dihydrochloric acid that produces the soluble calcium oxalate crystals so these are the different staining reagent while the dilute tincture of alkana is also used which produces red color on standing for 30 minutes that is specifically used for the detection of the volatile oil content or also 1% solution of osmic acid which produces brown color due to presence of the volatile oil okay so this is regarding the staining reagent that is used for 
observing the tears under the microscope. Then the next is chemical constituent. So as we know the volatile oil is the main content of this cinnamon bar. So it contains about 0.5 to 1% of volatile oil then 1.2% of tannins that is specifically known as the phlobatannins. Well, it also contains mucilage, calcium oxalate crystals, starch and uh, in taste we have seen it is going to produce the sweet taste. So, this is because of the sweet substance like mannitol. Okay. And it also contains the 60 to 70 percent of cinnamaldehyde, 5 to 10 percent of eugenol, then benzaldehyde, cuminaldehyde and other terpenes like philandrine, pinene, Simon and karyophyllin. So these are the different constituents which are present in this cinnamon bar. And yes, we know regarding the uses. So this is generally used as an aromatic stimulant carminative as it contains the volatile oil. But instead of that, it is also used as a flavoring agent, then mild astringent as it is going to contain the tannins. So, tannins are responsible for the astringent property that is having tendency to cause precipitation of the tissue proteins. And it is also going to show the stomachic and the antiseptic property. While it is used commonly in the spices as well as in the condiments, for pharmaceutical purpose, it is used in the preparation of candies, dentifrices that is in the treatment of dental problems as well as this is used as an, a perfume. And the oil obtained from the cinnamon bar, it is generally used as an, a carminative as well as the germicidal. So this is regarding the details of the cinnamon bar. So in this video, we have seen the cinnamon bark details like its synonym, biological source, macroscopy, microscopy, chemical constituent as well as uses of this cinnamon bark. So I hope you like this video. Please share this video. Also subscribe my channel if you are new to my channel and don't forget to add a comment. Thank you.